Hey America, welcome to Invest Now America. This is uh, my podcast. I, I try to be as consistent as possible with this podcast, doing some great things, great sharing some great information here. Please uh, sign up, encourage your friends to sign up. And also, we do have a Facebook, not a Facebook, a website called investnowamerica.org. I wanted to share with you um, something. Dr. Boyce Watkins, as many of you might know, he's probably one of the leading black intellectual thought leaders in the, um, in the world today. I was about to say in the country, but really I think he's one of the best in the world. Um, in my view, he ranks right up there with uh, Dr. Umar Johnson and Haki Matabutu and, and um, Riza Islam. I mean, the, the brother is, is amazing. And he, has a, he focuses on trying to get black folk to become entrepreneurs, to start their own business, to build wealth, and not just to build personal wealth and family wealth, but to build generational wealth. Um, he has some great books out. I've read a couple of them. I strongly encourage uh, people to read his books. Go to Amazon.com, put in Boyce Watkins, B-O-Y-C-E Watkins, and the guy's amazing. And then, of course, the, the one thing I really love about him, the brother's from Kentucky. Okay, so that's it. He's, he's great. But I always sensed I had a lot of political differences with Dr. Boyce Watkins. Um, because sometimes I was saying to myself, well, you know, I'm trying to do what Dr. Boyce Watkins is trying to do. What distinguishes me from him? And I, other than the fact he's one of the most profound intellectuals walking on God's green earth today, what's the one thing, you know, that distinguishes me from him? And I'm, I'm totally with him on the whole financial literacy information you know, wealth building information, totally with him. I'm hand in glove with him on that issue. But I had a sense I disagreed with some of his politics. And then, you know, as I got to learn more about him, he was, he was basically, he's basically saying he's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He is um, a B1. And and basically what he means is that he's all about uh, doing what's best to, uh, to lift up the black community in the United States of America. And I, and, and I can get with that. I understand that. I get with that. Um, you know, he, he, he thinks the Republican Party is doing something that's detrimental to the interests of black folk in America. You know, he criticizes it. He jumps all over it with both feet. If he sees the Democratic Party saying or doing something that's uh, detrimental to the highest in- interests and aspirations of black folk in the United States of America, he's all over it. You know, he's ju- he jumps on it with both feet. And I get that, and I understand that, and and I you know I respect that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I finally sort of was a, able to put my finger on, well, what is it that I really disagree with Dr. Watkins on? Because it's always important for it's important to me anyway to know where I agree with someone and where I disagree with somebody. Okay, and here it is. He he made a comment in one of his videos where he said he is not for capitalism. He he sort of adopts a socialistic, communistic type ideology. He doesn't believe that capitalism is, is has been or is good for black folk. And I said, well, that's it. Um, I emphatically disagree with him on that. Um, I am uh, unapod- unapologetically opposed to socialism, uh, Marxism, cultural Marxism, communism, etc. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm fanatically anti-communist. I'm fanatically anti-socialist. Why? Because I know, based on my studies, my research, and even my personal experiences, that that nonsense has always destroyed black folk, wherever we might be on planet Earth. And what has consistently always uplifted us as a, as a people is entrepreneurship, uh, business ownership, and general free market capitalism. Um, I am unashamedly an advocate of the free, free market capitalism, period. And so that's where I sort of, um, that's where my differences lie with Dr. Boyce Watkins. Other than that, you know, I love the man and respect the man, but it's important for me to, to point that out to people. When you come here 
to my podcast, you go to my website, you're not going to find anything where we're, I'm embracing socialism and cultural Marxism or anything like that. I'm going to give you solid facts and information and, and analysis and all that nonsense is not good for anybody, and black or white, and it's particularly not good for, for black folk. Free market capitalism, period, is it. Entrepreneurship, business ownership, period, that's it. In fact, I, have, I also have a local group here, a local group of young people, where I sort of mentor them, teach them, coach them about how to get into the stock market, um, how to identify companies, to research, um, what to look for when you're researching the companies, and then some questions you may want to ask before uh, you decide to buy or not buy. Okay? I am not a financial uh, advisor, but what I, I am is I consider myself a coach. And as a coach, I'm just trying to get more and more black, young black people involved in studying the stock market, learning about the stock market, its past, present, and future, I'm learning about what constitutes a good company, how to, how to find or identify a good company, how to research a good company. And if you're interested in becoming a you know, a shareholder in the company, how you can go about doing that. It's just that simple. And uh, my objective with this group is that when they reach uh, this age of, of 18, I want them to have at a minimum, at a minimum, um, a, a $5,000 uh, custodial stock account or a custodial stock account valued at $5,000. Think about that. Just think about that. Just think about that. Young, you know, young black person, Hey, you know, you graduated from high school and you have $5,000 in capital. You know, your your net worth is a positive $5,000. I mean, just think about that. How many young black people do you know, particularly in urban areas like Chicago, Detroit, Louisville, um, one of, any one of the five boroughs who, who can say, hey, I graduated, graduated from high school, and I've got this $5,000 stock um, custodial stock account and hopefully by that time what's more important to them than having five thousand dollars is that they have uh, multi-million dollar uh, education you know they they know how to use that capital how to grow that capital how to multiply that money so that you know that's that's my objective you know with with my group i call it invest now louisville um I have a uh, fiscal sponsor. It's a nonprofit I started, and that nonprofit I started, you know, it's our fiscal sponsor. So people can make financial donations to it. Sometimes people may say, oh, you know, if I make a financial donation, what's going to be used for? I'm going to tell you flat out what's going to be used for. Number one, it's going to be used for, um, as a group, we're going to have a uh, stock portfolio. And uh, two, you know, it's to buy books, books by Peter Lynch, William Buffett. Uh, A.G. Gaston, uh, Dennis Kimbrough. We're going to buy books and, and just flat out give it to the club members. Um, also, uh, we're going to use it towards food because then we're going we're to have meetings at publicly traded companies. Okay? So we're going to be checking out these publicly traded companies. A lot of people, for example, don't know Cracker Barrel is a publicly traded company. So we'll have a couple of meetings there. And I'll tell them flat out, hey, guys, check it out. Check out Cracker Barrel. Check out what they're doing. You know, what, do, you, do you like the food? Do you like how things, how you're being treated here? And if you do, all right, here's their ticker symbol. Go, go do some research on them. See if you might be interested in becoming a shareholder. You're a customer at Cracker Barrel. Now see if you're interested in becoming a shareholder. Okay? Um, so that's one thing the money be used towards. Going to different restaurants that are publicly traded. And um, and also I'll be bringing, I'll be introducing them to people in the, in the finance industry, whether they might be research analysts or you know certified financial planners, whatever, you know owners of asset management companies, stockbrokers, whatever, they'll through Zoom or through dinner meetings, they sit down and talk to these uh, folks, learn about hey you know what do you do, you know how'd you learn how to do that, what education did you get, and introduce them to the finance industry. I remember one year I did a a chess and financial literacy camp, and I had my students <clears throat> actually speak to someone 
who's part of one of the most successful asset management companies in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And uh, they asked a few questions. And then later on, this, this young woman, when she was given an, an evaluation of the program, she said, I never knew anything about the stock market. And I, I was, a, and then she said, man, I'd, I'd be interested in you know, doing something in the finance industry. She said it was just completely new to her. So boom, you know, one student I had another student. He was like, man, I didn't know you could buy shares in Nike. Because he's all into basketball. He's a typical young black man in the urban area. He's into his basketball. He's into his rap music. And I, you know, during my camp, I said, dude, you buying all that, that Nike gear, why don't you also become a Nike shareholder? He said, coach, what's that? I told him. Dude, entered the camp. I gave every one of them some money to start a st- st- custodial account at uh, stockpile.com. And, of course, he told his mother, look, I want, I want some Nike shares. And to this day, that was almost a year ago. To this day, he still talks about that Nike share. He's, he's keeping his eye on it. And he's joined my financial literacy uh, club. And he says, Coach, you know, I want to learn more. I want to do more. I want to see that grow. And Shoot, I want to see it grow for him, too. So I say all that. Really started this off by talking about Dr. Boyce Watkins, not to criticize him, but to say, hey, here's, here, here's where I'm different from him. And I think it was important to do that. Folks, again, go to my, um, what is it, my website, no, webpage, uh, investnowamerica.org. Sign up for my uh, blog. And then, two, we also have, um, we have our Facebook page, Invest Now America. Uh, you'll see a face of Peter Lynch there. Peter Lynch is like one of my heroes. Uh, I, I'm forever trying to raise money. Then I use that money to buy uh, books by Peter Lynch, and I, and I give them to my young people. And I, I really like Peter Lynch a lot. I have a lot of respect for him. But, hey, I have a lot of respect for other investors as well, such as Jesse Livermore, um, other great entrepreneurs like A.G. Gaston, um, Reginald Lewis, And then, of course, great motivational writers, business writers like Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. I really like that guy a lot. Um, And I I try to keep up with Ray Dalio. Of course, Warren Buffett. Um, I've read some of the financial stuff by Tony Robbins. He really really intrigues me. I really like a lot of what he has to say. But my big thing is to, and I do all this, and then I share this information Uh, to my young people. Folks, appreciate it. Um, Keep in touch with me. Sign up. Sign up for my blog at my website. And if you can donate, please donate. Because, uh, you know, it's time for us to turn things around in this country. And one of the best ways for us to turn things around in this country is to teach our young people financial literacy. Uh, Teach our young people about um, the benefits, the great and many benefits of free market capitalism. Teach our young people about how they can multiply their money, how they can grow their money in the stock market. 